point two, which is the um, Nightcap Village. Um, and the recommendation here is for is is to um, pass this on to the Northern Rivers Planning Panel. I'll um, move it. Thank you, Councillor I'll Pogles. second it. Thank you, Councillor Allsop. Would you like to speak to that, Councillor Pogles? Yes, Madam Mayor, it's one of the most challenging developments we've had before this council in this period of time, and uh, the issues and the yanks that's raised between um, some of the people that are heavily involved in this proposal makes you wonder whether it's even a viable proposition. Um, the Regional Planning Panel, um, I think, is the appropriate body to deal with this, and I support it. Um, it's a bit like a flick pass, but um, I'm supporting a flick pass. Thank you, Councillor Polglaze. Uh, would you, do we have any other speakers on this item? No, uh, Councillor Milne? Um, just uh, thanks, Madam Mayor. Just quickly, I mean, I think that this, the report, you know, clearly highlights that this um, development is actually so far out of the ballpark that it shouldn't have even been on the table. Um, this is like something that uh, has got like, seems that all the agencies are um, have got concerns with or at least need more information about um, and you know it's it's uh, something that I I don't think is going to be able to get a, approval um, from the advice that has been provided it is um, it is not actually even able to be approved so um, yeah the the impacts are are really significant. Um, I, I was just reading before somewhere, so there's um, quite extensive amount of um, vegetation clearing that would be required. Uh, 106 hectares actually of native vegetation and a further 220 hectares of impact on native populations and areas described as cleared grass paddocks um, with scattered trees regrowth. And um, so I guess councillors, um, you know, one of the, the big concerns is actually about um, the um, value that was proposed to in this development. It was, um, I'll take this off. It was um, deemed that um, originally that the application as submitted um, was not, um, in the category that should have been referred to the Northern Rivers Planning Panel and um, that it should have been referred by council staff. And it's come back that um, there's actually, they've included bridge works as well now. And so that it is back up to $40 million and um, gets back into the planning panel category again. Um, I, I'm extremely concerned about people who have invested in, in that property in regard to whether they're actually aware of the, the um, that it's actually going to be $40 million um, before it even gets off the ground um, for the road access ways. And those, um, uh, even before the houses are built or, or the power's put on or the water tanks are in or the sewerage is sorted or any of that. Um, $40 million. There's a lot of people investing in this place already and um, I just, I worry whether they were aware of those um, costs that are involved in this project. Thank you, Councillor Milne. Do we have any other speakers for this item? I'd like to speak to it. Um, so, Obviously, we're all aware of the questions with regards to jurisdiction that have been raised and the questions with regards to cost that have been attributed to the proposal and the new costs that are, have now been found. The current recommendation before us assumes, for argument's sake, that the CIV, the cost um, value estimate, does, does actually meet the requirements and that it can go to the Northern Rivers Planning Panel. Um, but it also leaves it open for council to determine it if the Northern Rivers Planning Panel does decide that it is not actually at, in their jurisdiction. So it, it's very, very clear from the report, as Councillor Milne says, that this proposal, if this proposal comes back to council, 
then it would be recommended for refusal. I think we all know that rural land sharing communities have been banned in our in our shire for a reason. It's because of the legacy issues that they create for the inhabitants. And while it's all, you know, it's a very wonderful idea at the beginning with, you know, it's a fantastic idea in theory for the communal living. We know that it quickly deteriorates into a very limiting situation when people's health or their financial situation changes and uh, or people simply age out of this model of, of, of living and um, and it makes a very insecure future for people. Uh, and, and I guess that's why we have banned them in the LEP. And I think um, with the proposal here of this particular concept that's got the in perpetuity responsible responsibility for the management of environmental lands um, with 392 owners separately being responsible it, it's it's not a workable tenant and I think even if if these ideas factors could be sorted out um, and it is recognized that the state government has made allowances for this type of development in certain circumstances it's very clear from the report and from the advice we have received that this particular development does not meet those requirements. It's, it's not a development on a single lot of three or more houses. The lots are inter interdependent on each other for provision of access and services. It does have a wildlife corridor coming across it and, and they haven't been able to demonstrate that there won't be adverse impacts. So I think it's, um, it, it's really, you know, the proposal to relocate the wildlife corridor uh, is simply not realistic. It's not in keeping with the um, SAP requirements. And and it's incredibly important um, that it is consistent with the SEP and, and hopefully that is what the NRPP will look at if it goes to them. I think there's also significant Aboriginal cultural heritage issues. And, and in the report, it raised the fact that there would, um, it, it's assessed uh, or it's it's put forward that it would require clearing of around 106 hectares of native vegetation that would likely incur costs for off offsetting this loss and other losses of around $27 million. That's that's in our report. And, and I don't think, I think that goes to Councillor Milne's point that I don't think that people who are wanting to go into this um, development understand those costs that would be um, associated with this particular development. And I think in, in seeking to have the development assessed by the NRPP, the developer is obviously wanting to avoid council's prohibition on this type of development and our density controls. Um, but, you know, it can't have it both ways. It needs to conform to the SEP or to our, to our um, controls. And, and at this point it does neither. So I, I strongly support it going to the NRPP. I strongly support that if they decide that the costs do not um, warrant, um, have, have not been correctly calculated and it doesn't warrant um, a decision by them, that it comes back to us and it is um, refused on merit. So um, I, I think it's it's very important that, that we provide this jurisdictional question to be answered. Um, but I, I strongly believe that this is not uh, an appropriate development for that site. Thank you. And I would like to now ask if there's any other speakers on this um, motion. Nope. Then I'd like to call the vote. So all those in favour? Thank you, councillors. That vote is unanimous. Thank you, councillors. That brings us to item 